We're just, uh, we're just excited. We're in, in uh, part seven of our series, Storyteller, where we're talking about the parables of Jesus, and we're going to piggyback uh, kind of off last week's a little bit, but we're going to be talking about the parable of the, uh, the talents, and so uh, we'll have a talent show after church, after worship this morning. Uh, no, I'm teasing. That was a good joke. Uh, my wife didn't laugh. But we're going to have a good time. We're going to have fun today, but uh, without any further ado, let's pray, and we'll jump right into service. God, we thank you for today. Lord, we ask that you just speak it through our lives. We ask that you move in a mighty way in our lives. Lord, God, we thank you that we can hear one word, one sentence from you, and it changes just the, the trajectory or the course of our life. And so, God, we thank you for moving. We thank you for speaking. We thank you for being here as we as families uh, come together as a church family and experience the family of God. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and let's worship God this morning.
All right, just a few announcements. Um, so, you know, our egg hunt was probably the best we've ever had. There was over 300 people there. We did over 6,000 eggs. Um, I say it's all Vaughn's fault because he won't let us stop. <laughs> but Vaughn and Kathy graciously went and got their eggs that they used for their chickens. Not their eggs, their cartons. But they used for their chickens. Um, that would be an interesting egg hunt. Um, maybe think the eggs bust open now. This is your ones. Anyway, um, so throughout this year, if you have egg cartons and you just throw them away, please bring them here to the church because we're going to need some for next year. Um, last year we were just putting them in boxes because we had, you know, we didn't have enough cartons. So if if you're a person that maybe you give your cartons back to whoever you get your eggs from, that's that's fine. Uh, but if you're just going to throw your cartons away, bring them here. We will. We can bring them once a week. You can bring them once a month. I don't care, because we'll have a tote that we'll just keep them in, uh, because we do need extra egg cartons for next year. Uh, because we always try to do a little bit better every year, and every year the egg hunt just gets a little bit better, and um, we're able. And every year there's more kids that come out, and we're able to just just bless people. That's part of what we who we are here at this church. Okay, so we also have our food pantry out front, and I am always just, two things that I'm really amazed about is how much it gets used, and it kind of breaks my heart to see how much that gets used, because that means people are hungry in our community, in our town here, um, and there's kids that, uh, what we notice a lot is when school is out, that pantry will get wiped out, so that means we have kids in our town that are going hungry. That breaks my heart. That's just so sad. So, and I know we've asked it before. Um, when you're shopping, just pick up something extra to put on the list, to put in the box. Um, if you're buying in bulk, Brian and Colleen have a fantastic idea. Of, we have a cupboard back here in the back room that they're putting some overflow stuff. So if they're able to get it in larger quantities, and sometimes you don't want to put all of one thing out there. Um, so if you're shopping and you're like, man, this is a really good deal, but, you know, there's plenty of them. As long as it's got a good date on it, don't bring us outdated stuff, okay? Um, just bring it. We have a place to store it. So something that we have found, and I think I'm just amazed at how much it's used, is personal care items, deodorant, toothpaste, laundry soap, just body soap. Um, you know, I think of my kid who, you know, he's 12 now, goes to school. He has access to deodorant. Like, he has multiple deodorants at our house. Some kids don't have that. And I don't know if uh, teenage boys can smell. So, you know, that's something we can be a blessing to. So just help them out a little bit, right? Deodorant goes a long ways. Um, toothpaste. Um, they also, peanut butter and jelly, Easy Mac. When you're thinking of the food pantry, you're trying to think of things that they don't really have to add extra ingredients to. Um, that, so Easy Mac is perfect. Um, tuna, canned um, meats. You can buy chicken in, in the pouches, that kind of stuff. So, you know, when you're shopping, put it on your list and pick up one extra thing. Can we do, if we all just added one extra thing? We would have them fully stocked. I know the church has fully stocked them at least twice, maybe three times. Um, and we fully stocked them. Um, so this summer, we're going to have to be stocking. So that's why I'm asking you guys to just pick up something. Just it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a name brand. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just pick something up and and bring it bring it here. And if you're like, oh, I have some stuff, but I can't get there, call us. We'll come get it. Um, that's not a problem. Okay? All right. So then we also have coming up on May 6th is Book Bingo. Colleen has organized this with her friend Kelsey. And it is a lot of fun. Cleo's like, yes! Um, it's a lot of fun because the kids are there. And so you bring a book or books and you play bingo and you get books. If you are a reader, this is a great, fun thing to do. It's a lot of fun. Um, I came home with several books. And I think everybody wins. At some point, everybody wins. So it's a lot of fun, but that's May 6th. It's here at the church down in the um, basement at 6 p.m. Bring your own snacks. Um, and then we have Family Sunday coming up. That's in two weeks on May 2nd. 
So that will be, you know, we always have a curated meal. This year, or this month, next month, our uh, theme is going to be Mexican. This is another one of my favorites, because I love Mexican food. So bring your favorite Mexican food. Or, you know, if you're like, I really don't like Mexican, that's okay, but it's something you like. You don't really care. Just bring something for everyone to share. Um, I'm always afraid we're going to run out of food. So I usually bring three things, three different things. Because I'm like, what if we don't have enough food and then people don't get to eat? So um, bring something to share that is on the second. So. Okay. Are you sure? Let me check. I'm going to double check. <laughs> <laughs> So, I think we should have a hot pepper eating contest at the, do we have, does anybody like hot stuff? Can we do a hot pepper eating contest? Dalton, you can bring like a, what's the hottest pepper you've eaten? Like a suicide one or nose pepper? Yeah. Chase that down with some hot, a jalapeno, anyway. Um, we're going to have fun today. This is going to be an experiment in, uh, for me because um, my contacts uh, that I normally wear ripped, and there's something just about not being able to see with all of your one eye, so I threw those away. And I got my other pair of contacts that were like a uh, practice ones, so they're set for distance, not up close. So I'm going to have to put these on, and I might poke myself in the eye or whatever. I don't know. So it's a new thing for me, but I wish I just, I probably should just get a prescription tablet. <laughs> or just go to the eye doctor because I'm a better friend. Yeah. So, or just have someone hold it up there. Be fine. Anyway, let's pray and we'll jump right into uh, the parable of the talents. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you. We'll have a great time um, exploring your word. We'll have a great time putting ourselves in this parable. Um, we'll, we'll have a great time of seeing who you are and getting to know more about just the heart of the Father and the heart of who Jesus is today. Lord, we thank you for moving. We thank you for speaking into our lives, and we thank you that we'll have a good time learning more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So today we're um, we're in our seventh part of our Storyteller series. What we're doing is we're, we're looking at the parables that Jesus spoke to his disciples, uh, or he spoke to people, um, you know, out in the, in the streets there, and then how we, or how he explained it to the disciples later. And it's kind of like if we're just kind of sitting in a chair next to Jesus going, what did you mean by that? What? What are we talking about with, with all this? And so if you want to open your Bibles or your devices to Matthew 25, um, we'll have some uh, uh, scriptures up on the screen. But a parable is a simple definition, an earthly story or illustration that, that, that drives home a spiritual point. That gives us a spiritual uh, nugget that we can take and we can chew on, that we can uh, make a deposit into our life. And so um, we're going to be talking about the parable of the talents. Now, when Jesus told this, this uh, parable, he wasn't talking about talents like, I, I can sing. Do you want me to prove it to you? No. Okay. Uh, it's not like a tap dancing talent, or I can, uh, it's not a talent that, uh, that I can win would, would at a talent show, or I would go to American Idol and, and win. It's not that type of thing. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a sum of money, is what it's talking about. We'll, we'll dig into that. If you were here last week with the unforgiving debtor, it's the same talent that he's talking about. And so we'll, we'll dig into that. But it's not a gift. It's a talent of money. Or a talent is a, it's a, it's a, uh, a, a equivalent to a, a sum of money. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 15. It'll be up there. Maybe I can read that uh, a little bit better than I can read this. But Jesus is, again, driving the point home. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. So he gave five bags of money to one. Right? Anybody want five bags of money? Okay. Two bags of silver to another and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities and he left on his trip. One translation of the Bible, or several translations, says instead of bags, it was talents. He gave five talents to one, two talents to another, and one talent 
to the, the last one. And uh, what Jesus is referring to is money. And so to kind of help you out, I'm going to go back into math nerd mode. And I put it up on the screen for you here. And so a, <laughs> a talent is 6,000 denarii, right? A denarii is one day's wages. So a Illinois minimum wage, we'll just go with that. We know that maybe two of you don't make minimum wage here, but just to break it down evenly, minimum wage at $13 an hour and eight hours a day is $104 per day, okay? So one denarii is $104 a day. A talent would be 6,000 denarii, and it would come out to $624,000, okay? So one of those bags that he gave out was $624,000. Some people say it can weigh uh, 75 pounds. So if you were like me, you could put you know two bags in each hand and just carry them like this all around. That was your wallet, right? So one bag, one bag, the guy that received one, $624,000, right? The guy that received two talents, $1.25 million. The guy who received five was just shy, or just over three million dollars. The parable starts out, this guy was leaving on a trip, and he calls his servants and says, hey, I'm going to give this to you, 3.1 million dollars, 125,000, or no, 1.25 million, sorry, and 624,000 dollars, basically, in bags, hefty trash bags so they wouldn't rip it, right? I'm, I'm assuming that they came along with carts or a wagon, because that's a lot. So, they were divided up to what their abilities were. But when I was growing up, I'm like, oh, gifts or talents. These are like, oh, I can do public speaking. Or I can, I can, um, you know, if you're a salesman, you can sell a, a, a popsicle made of ketchup with woman with white gloves or something like that. You know what I mean? Like you can sell, um, you know, swamp lane from Florida to anybody type thing. You know, it's not those. It, talent represents money, but it also represents our opportunities to do something for Jesus. Does that make sense? Okay? And so the parable here, it deals with our, what we're doing for Jesus when he's not here, when he's gone. The master or the man who's given the money out represents Jesus. We are represented by the servants who got five, two, or one bag of talent. And so this brings us to our, our, our point here is the story is about the responsibility God has given each one of us. Imagine that you're that person that received five or you received three or you received one and you're, you received one. You're not looking at the guy and jealous that you got five. How come I got one? It's all what we've been given things to do for God, which brings us to our main point is am I taking what God has given me and am I using it? Am I investing it into others? So that's what, am I, am I taking what God has given me? Am I investing it into others? I try to do it every Sunday with my sense of humor, but you all just can't accept it. <laughs> but let's put things in perspective. The servants and the money belonged to the master. They belonged to the owner. So back then they didn't own, they, 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 were, they were servants to the master. They, they didn't, really didn't have freedom. But we have freedom in Christ. We have freedom in, in, in this earth today. But they didn't belong to themselves. And the possessions weren't their own. The money in the bags wasn't theirs. It was the master's. It was the, it was the guy who left it to them. They were employees, if you will. And they lived there. He, he said, here is my money. Go and invest it. Go and do something with it. The servants were his and the money was his. They all belonged to the master. We belong to the Lord to be used for him. We are owners of nothing but stewards of everything is one way to say it. When I am in covenant with God, that's who I am as a, as a Christian. We are as Christians, we're in covenant with God. So everything I am, I give to God. Here I am. And then I have access because we're in covenant relationship that I have access to all who all God is. And all of his abilities. Like if you think of it this way, if you were, if we were back in the day, two uh, towns or peoples could be in covenant with each other. One was really good farmers. The other ones were warriors. The farmers weren't very good warriors. 
So they would make a covenant with the two, make a covenant. All that I have is yours. All that I have is yours. And they protect each other. The farmers fed the warriors. The warriors protected the farmers. Does that make sense? When we're in covenant with God, when we're, when, when we're his sons or his daughters, everything that we are, like, all right, God, here I am. Use me. Do what you want me to do. And then everything that God is becomes available in our lives. We are the stewards of the value of the talents. The Bible tells us we've been bought with a price. Therefore, we should glorify God with all of our lives. And it may sound crazy, but when we just say, all right, God, what do you want me to do today? It may be as simple as, hey, I want you to smile at somebody. I want you to tell that cashier, hey, have a good day. I want you to do something to impact somebody positively because we are all the servants and our basic needs are taken care of. If we were these people, they had, they had no desire or no need that wasn't met. Their foods were met. Their basic ownership was met. Their food, housing, and clothing was all met by this master. Now he's saying, I'm going on a trip. Take my money and invest it. Right? Can any of you guys take $624,000 and invest it? You could spend it all. Yes, I would buy. I would have $624,000 worth of Legos in my house. <laughs> Possibly the biggest drone ever. That's what you would buy. One of those ones that would pick people up. Anyway. <laughs> So the key is all their basic needs were taken care of. They say, here is my money invested. But they didn't realize that my God shall supply all of our needs. They didn't realize that, that, that it was dividing it up into their abilities. Because listen, this is really, really, really key. God equips us to accomplish the tasks he's given us. If God has called you to do something, if God is prompting you to do something, you already have the tools that you need to do it. They're already in your tool belt or your toolbox or wherever you keep said tools. Truck or trunk or whatever. Maybe you can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> My father-in-law is shocked. If you put things away, he couldn't find it. And it was quite fun to do that. <laughs> Take them, oh, this wrench is buried in dirt. I'm going to put it away. He's looking over the wrench. Anyway. Yeah, he knows exactly where it's at. If God is challenging or leading us to do something, he's equipped you to complete it in full. Whatever you do in life, he's given you the gifts to complete it. You see, if God is leading, calling me, and asking me to do something, if he says, go talk to this person, or go, go tell this person about me, or just go be nice to somebody, he's given me the abilities to do it. It's already there. It's already in my, my toolbox. It's already there. God already knows what we'll need in the future. So if we see a need, like the food pantry, or if we see a need that someone needs some money for something, God's already looking in advance and says, oh, if you give this person $100, then your electric and water bill and everything is due, I'm going to make sure you get that back. Or someone needs help doing something, and it's not money, it's time. It's, it's, it's resources, or it's an idea, it's something that's not, that, that, that you just, I don't have time to help, but if you give your time to help, God's going to make sure to redeem the time. All of a sudden, things just stretch out. What is he calling us to do that we haven't done yet? And we're going to get to some really cool, really neat questions in our lives. Is because one of our greatest challenges is stepping out and doing something we've never done before. I can ride a bike. I can pop a wheelie. I've not gotten on a unicycle yet. I don't know if I want to get on a unicycle at 46 years old because sometimes when I get off the couch, I hurt. <laughs> So I don't want to get him fall over and, you know, and hurt myself. But, uh, you know, I can step out and do something I've never done before. Right? This is the parable. For this parable, we don't know if this is the first time the master has given them bags of money, bags of resources to use. Is this the first time that they've been called into the thing and said, hey, I want you to invest this. Was this their first time or was this their 15th time? We, we don't know, but we know what they did. What we, we're going to finish. We'll get off of this before. But when we're doing something in life, we are better than we give ourselves credit for. How many guys lowball our own abilities? Right? I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do that at all. Well, I've never done it before. I probably will fail. Well, this or that. We are better than we give ourselves credit for. We're smarter than we realize. We can accomplish more 
that we believe we can accomplish. Walk in confidence, right? I don't know what it's like for my team to win the Super Bowl, but those of you that do, you walk around work on Monday like this, with your sweatshirt on or, or whatever, certainly not the Steelers or anything like that, but walk in confidence, right? I got this. You know, walk, walk around with your chest puffed out like a jack turkey or something? I don't know. But here's a really good scripture. Our, our slide up here, uh, Hebrews chapter 13. It says, now may the God of peace, God of peace. So if you're doing something you've never done before, and you're a little nervous, and you're anxious, or you have anxiety, remember, God is the God of peace, not nervousness. Does that make sense? Now may the God of peace who brought up, you up from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, our great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he give you everything you need to accomplish some tasks. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him, all glory to him, the Father, forever. And our main point, am I taking what God has given me and investing it into others? Do I have these things that are in me, and am I sowing them into people? Am I planting them into people? Uh, I think I'm very hilarious, right? Thank you for laughing. It just proves my point. I always love to leave, and I said this before, I love to love people with a smile on their face. I always love to do that. Because that's just one thing I, you know, I think Jesus smiled. I think Jesus was very uh, hilarious, just like me. Um, and, and I think he would wants to leave people with a smile on their face. So every time I come in contact with somebody, I read the name on their name badge, and I say, hey, so-and-so, how's your day going? And you're at work. Well, it's going all right. Well, I hope you have a good day, and even better after you, you get off work. Because, you know, it's just, just it, it's so much better than, like, you know, your groceries are going through, and you're like, hey, can you put slang on my groceries against there? Or just being a perk. Like fill in the blank, you know, being, you know, being a sourpuss or something. Because we want to leave people with an impact. Now, back to our story, Matthew chapter 25. The servant who received five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. Hey, I like that. The servant who received two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, God's given us talents, he's given us abilities, he's given us giftings, he's given us things to use. God is a multiplier. Not just in one of addition, but a multiplier. I learned at a very young age that two plus two is four. Alright, I was going to say that, but I need to comedically listen to it anyway. But if you take four times four, it's, it's, it's a lot better than four plus four. I think. Yes. Okay. <laughs> God is a multiplier. He multiplies things. The two servants double their portion. They went from five to ten, two to four. Right? And the one guy dug a hole and didn't earn nothing. And so God is a God of multiplication. God is just saying, take your hands, apply it, do something, and watch me work. Take your time. I, I you know what I said. Couple hours a day, I help somebody do something. God's going to make sure I get that back. It's not just about money; it's about everything we invest into others. God's going to multiply it back to us. You may say, "Show me in the Bible that God's a multiplier." Well, in Genesis, He told Adam and Eve, "Be fruitful and multiply." Right? He said it in Genesis chapter eight sixteen. God said to Abraham, "I will greatly multiply your descendants, so there may be too many to count." If you remember right, he told him to look at the stars and, and said there'll be more numerous than the stars. The widow's oil in 1 Kings multiplied it, where, where she kept pouring, as long as she had the empty containers, that one jar filled up all these other jars. Multiplied. Because they put their hands to something, God multiplied it. Jesus, when he was with the, had the loaves and the fishes, right? Five loaves and two fish. Anyway, I need to go back to children's church. You don't sing to us? Let's get puppets and do like this kind of stuff. Jazz hands. Okay, anyway. Five loaves and two fish. He fed the 5,000. And he fed the 4,000. He did it twice. I wish God would multiply my, my McDonald's yesterday. No, Friday. 
went and got me a quarter pounder of cheese meal at McDonald's. I don't. <laughs> but that's where Eric wanted to go. Eric was working at my house, and so I took him out to lunch. I should have taken him someplace fancy like Sam's Club, but we went to McDonald's. <laughs> and when I saw the bill, I was like, geez, that multiplied, but my food's not. Anyway, yeah, besides the point. Thank you for that. You see, when we invest our time, our talents, our gifts, our resources, God's got something to work with. Here's a little math problem for you. God times zero equals zero. God's like, hey, I'm ready. No one wants to do anything. All right. But God times one talent, one gifting, one time I help somebody out, and then boom, he can multiply and work with that. He can do something with that. He can do some amazing results. This is a really cool one in the, in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3. It's not up on the screen, but it says, bring all the tithes of the storehouse. There'll be enough food in my temple. If you do, the Lord God from heaven's army says, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. And I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room to take it in. He goes, try it. Put me to the test. Pouring it out. It wasn't a sprinkle. God didn't say, try it and I'll, I'll do a pinch of salt on you or a pinch of something. I don't even know what that is in a recipe. But anyway. Or a sprinkle. I'll just sprinkle a little bit. No, it's pour. It was just dump. Pouring out. So if we put our hands to something, God says he'll multiply it. Acts chapter 12 says the hope of the kingdoms heaven kept spreading and multiplying everywhere. You get the point. When we give our time and our resources, our giftings, money, or whatever we invest, God's going to multiply it in all areas of that. Now back to our story, because this question has to be asked to ourselves. What has God given to us that we haven't planted yet? Right? So today we're on the way to church. And I love this time of the year because the baby corn's coming up. Right? If you don't know what baby corn is, it's a little baby white, or not white, you know, green corn that's coming up in the ground. It's just little babies. And you guys say it like that, little baby corn. Little baby corn. Because if there's no baby corn, then the corn pickers can't come in the fall. That's what they're I know they're not called corn pickers, but that's kind of wrong. Just to annoy my wife. What has the master given you and you haven't planted it yet? Don't say soybeans. I know it's not time to plant beans yet. Matthew chapter 25, 18. After a long time, the master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they used his money. Think of it. He's went on a long trip. Where'd he go? Maybe Hawaii? Maybe he went on an Alaskan summer cruise? I don't know. He was on a long trip. He comes back, brings the three in, says, all right, here we go. What'd you do with my money? Because we'll all face a day when we give an account for our actions. This is a parable to that there. What did you do with the opportunities I gave you is what God's going to ask us. Yeah. It goes on in Matthew chapter 25, verse 20 through 23 on the screen. The servant to whom he entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more. He said, Master, you gave me five bags to invest. I got five more. So now there's 10 70-pound bags of silver. Right? Go on here. It says, and, uh, the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. We'll get to that in a second. The servant who received the two bags of silver came forward and said, I got doubled it, so I'm good here too, right? You know? No, he says, you gave me two bags, and here it is. I got two more. The master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling a small amount. So now I will give you more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Put yourself there. He gave me five. Here's five more. He gave me two. Here's two more. The king's like, this is awesome. This is great. Bring out the mountain dunes and pizza. Let's celebrate. Right? Put some fireworks on. Am I taking what God has given me and investing into others because our faithfulness today causes promotions and blessings tomorrow? When you're faithful in the small, did you catch that? Small amount. $1.25 million equivalent was a small amount to God. $3.1 million was a small amount to God. So we have to rethink sometimes how God, or thinking of who God is. You know, maybe $3 million is a small amount to you. But if someone handed me a check for $3 million, eh, I'd have all the Legos I wanted. I know, I step on. Anyway. 
You see, God is able to do above and beyond we can think or imagine. Let's take that out of money. Do we not have enough time to do everything we need to do in life? But when you put God first, then all of a sudden you have time to do a lot of things. You see, that's what, what it is. It's because God sees how we handle responsibility and then his, his desires to give you more. Look at, look at Moses. Moses was faithful to be a shepherd over some animals. And then all of a sudden, because he was faithful there and because God has called him to do something, he's now leading millions of people out of Egypt. David was faithful to defend two sheep. David defended two sheep. I mean, he killed a bear with his bare hands. Killed a bear with his bare hands. He didn't have bare hands. Just with, anyway, that was fun. He had bare hands after he killed the bear. I hope, I'm hoping that God invests humor into you guys. No, I'm just <laughs> David was faithful to defend two sheep, and then he was def defending a nation. You see, your faithfulness to stand steady, even when you don't like your job, even when you don't like your situation where you're at, just stay faithful. Just stand steady because it, it plants and invests. And when even when it's hard to plow, plant and invest into others, into people. Because God's going to see that, and he's going to bring you promotion. Even when the circumstances aren't pretty, your faithfulness opens a door for God to multiply things into your life. Be faithful where you're at. It may not be where you want to be in life now, but God's removing some things, but we don't see it just yet. Psalms chapter 75, verses 6 through 7 says, This I know. The favor that brings promotion and power doesn't come from anywhere on earth. For no one exalts a person but God, the true judge of all. He alone determines where favor rests, and he anoints one for greatness and brings down another to his knees. And so we talked a little bit a couple weeks ago about when you're humble, he lifts you up. And so that's what he's talking about here is when you're, when you're investing, when you're showing yourself faithful, and you're being humble about it, God brings you up. There's a story from the 1840s about John Getty. John Getty left a church in Canada to take his wife and two small children to the South Sea Islands and began a mission work there. Put yourself back in the 1840s. There, there wasn't internet. You couldn't get a hotel to get there. You basically just got on a boat and went, right? This island chain was filled with cannibals and more than 20 crew members of a British ship had been killed you know what a cannibal is, you can fill in the blank. Just months before they arrived on the mission field. I know right there my wife would be like, time out. Did you say cannibals or cannonballs? Because <laughs> if you said cannonballs, I'm out. Like, you know, she was just right there. But these guys pushed through. Listen to what they did. They faced difficulty learning a language that had no written form. Okay? They couldn't, they couldn't go online. They didn't have Google Translate and say, can you say that again? And it translates, oh, okay, you know. They faced that. Listen, there was a constant threat of being killed. Their lives were in danger. Listen to what they did. Slowly at first, a few converts came, and then soon many more received the good news of Jesus. He continued his ministry faithfully, including translating the entire Bible into that native language and personally planting 25 churches in that area. He labored with little help and little word from, from where he came from, but God was faithful. He just, did, he just did a small thing, and God showed up. Now, the pulpit that he was at for many years, there's a plaque that stands there, and this is what's really crazy. It stands there and says, when he landed in 1848, there were no Christians there. When he left in 1872, there were no heathens. Went from no one knowing Christ to everybody knowing Christ. Just because he put his hands to something. Am I taking what God has given me and am I investing it into others? It doesn't mean you've got to move to where they, you know, to, no one knows English and you don't know what the language is. No, just go to your neighbor and be nice to them. Cut the grass where it goes in your yard, not their yard. You know, be nice to somebody. Let's continue reading. Let's finish our story of Matthew 25, 24. Then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, investing or harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. 
I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid into the earth. Here is your money back. Now, I mean, if I gave somebody $624,000 and they gave it back to me, I might be happy, but there was, you didn't do anything with it. You didn't do anything with what you had. What gift has God given you that out of fear you failed to move with it? Or out of fear you failed to plant? You just dug a hole and buried it. I don't want to do that, God. I don't want to. If I do something, if, God, if I say yes to you talking to my neighbor, me talking to my neighbor, you're going to have me move to an island where we eat each other. No. We have that fear. We have to get out of that fear. He goes on. The master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. I, that's not what I want to hear. He says, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank and at least you would have gotten a little interest on it? You know, if you, you get a 4% yield on a savings account today, that's pretty good. You could have gotten 4% at a $624,000. I didn't do the math, but it's, that's more than zero. Right? Why didn't you deposit it in the bank? You could have gotten some interest. Then he ordered, take the money from the servant, give it to the one who was tent bags of silver. So now this guy has got 11 bags. You see, he didn't purposely do evil, but he purposefully did nothing. You see, he didn't, he didn't, Think he was committing to sin, but he was he was robbing himself and robbing others he was going to be investing in. You see, if God calls us to invest in somebody and we don't do it, then, then they're missing out and we're missing out. But then God's gonna say, Hey, can you go take 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 up the slack here? Anybody have a job? Or there's just that one guy that slacks. Right? And you're like, do they not see this? This, this person is just doing this all day long on their phone and not working. And here I am, I'm sweating, I'm, I'm, I'm stinky, I'm, I'm, my back hurts more because I'm picking up their slack. That's what we need. We need to do what God's called us to do and, and move on. Why? You see, he hid his money and buried it in the ground. Why? He chose to live for himself, serve his own interest. He's kind of living selfishly. Yeah, it took him some effort to dig a hole and bury it. And then did he have to have security for that? Did he have to keep an eye out on it? Did he put something over top of it so no one will see the freshly opened you know, hole with, you know, three quarters of, or, you know, five eighths of a million dollars in it? Right? How many guys got coffee cans with money buried in the backyard? No one fell for it. I thought someone was going to fall. Anybody, everybody ever heard this thing? You just took money and buried it in the backyard? I was trying to see who it was. Do we have, listen, he chose to live for himself. He's like, I'm not going to get anything out of this anyway, so why bother? This is his money. When he comes back, he's just going to take what he gave me and what I earned for him and, and go. He says he didn't want to be reminded, he buried it. He didn't want to be reminded of what he should be doing. I should be doing something, but uh, I'm not going to do it. And every time he looked at me, I should be doing something like that. It was not there to make him uncomfortable, but constantly reminding him of his master's expectations. You see, the master said this. He didn't even do the minimum effort to put it in the bank to collect interest. He just took it home, buried it, forgot about it. When God wanted to use it to do some amazing things. So here's the question you need to ask yourself. Do you have giftings? Do you have talents? Do you have abilities? Or what God has called you to do, and you went home and dug them, and you put them in the ground and forgot about them? Well, today's the day we dig them up and start using them for something. Today's the day we say, you know what? I've got these things in me because I'm going to take what God's given me, and I'm going to invest it in others. And we learn that if we don't use it, we lose it. Because we just, we just saw that they went away. So... The, the, the one that didn't do anything went to the other guy. In our final slide here, Matthew 25, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they'll have an abundance. But for those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I've always wondered what that was, but that's just separation from God. 
But he's using, Jesus is using this parable. The, 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 the master's like, can you do, can you even get 4% interest on this? Just go away. Okay. Think of this master. He gave away 3 million, 1.25, $625,000. That wasn't his total savings account. And he used this gift. He, he didn't, we don't know if the master says, hey, now, now put this in the bank. He gave it to the other ones. God has given us so much stuff and things to use that we put roadblocks up because we don't think we're worthy of it. We don't think we're good enough for it. See, he didn't use what he had. And as we closed, he dug a hole and he in the ground and he hid what the master gave him. What has God given us that we have buried and we haven't been using? What giftings and abilities that others could benefit for that we've just buried? He didn't know his master. He thought, oh man, you're a harsh man. You, you reap where you haven't sown. And, and when I think of that, I'm like, is this guy just walking through the sweet corn patch just going, I'll take that. I'll take that. We're grabbing someone's pot out of their house and no, he, he, he's looking at, he's not a harsh person. How many of us have that view of God? That God's a harsh person? No, he's generous, he's loving, he's giving. This man lived in fear. I was afraid I would lose him. I was afraid I would lose him. But at least you tried. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid if I say something that I'll, that I'll get tongue-tied and I'll, I won't know what to say. God's like, just try just do something. Just use your talent. Start using your gift and your ability. And watch how I multiply. Watch how I help others see it. You see, God does some amazing things. This guy failed to take ownership. Here, I'm giving back what was yours. When we take ownership of things, it changes, it changes our view of stuff. You see, we have to have the view of this is our town, this is our city. We're going to take it for Jesus. We want everyone here to be like the Gettys where, where there's no one that doesn't know about God in this area. Even if you just say, hey, God bless you. God, God loves you. God's, God's thinking about you. Hey, God's not mad at you. The people in my world are my responsibility, my friends, my coworkers, my teammates, my, my classmates, if I go to school. We have to make sure that we are using our gifts to invest in others. You see... Am I taking what God has given me? Am I investing it into others? Let's close our eyes. In, in, in this room today, we have several <laughs> different people here that, that are in several different areas. We're all in different spots of our lives and where we're at in our relationship with God and what God's called us to do. And, 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 and if, if we're, you know, wherever we're at, it's all, it's all the same because... God speaks and moves in our lives right where we need to be, right where we're at. What have we put in the ground? What have we buried? And, and kind of just said, nope, I'm not going to do that. That God says, hey, I want to use that to benefit others. I want to use that to move in someone's life. If you're here and you've been hiding the gifts and the talents and the, the, the resources that God's put inside you, it's time to dig them up, brush them off, and put them to use. God, I thank you for today. I thank you that I can try to convey this parable of how you've given us things in life and that we, we should be using things to, to impact other people. God, I thank you that as a church family, we can start using those gifts that we've buried. We can polish off the gifts we haven't used in a while. We can continue to be doing things that you've called us and, and gifted us to do because we want to invest time, resources, talents, giftings, callings, words of encouragement, faithfulness, everything we can, we want to invest into others. We want people to be better and closer to you after they've had a time with us. So God, I thank you for that. If there's anybody here that does not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, you can, you can know that today is the day just by simply asking God to forgive you of your sins. And simply by saying, God, forgive me of my sins. It's real easy to do. 
be my Lord and be my Savior. You see, it doesn't matter where you're at in life. It doesn't matter what you've done. God doesn't care. He wipes it away. He doesn't remember. Like we said a couple weeks ago, if you ask God to forgive you of, of sins A, B, C, and D, and then, and then you, he says, yes, I've forgiven you. And the Bible says that he throws them as far as the east is to the west. He says, I will forgive their sins and remember their transgressions no more. So if you did a quick Google search, God, do you remember when I did this? It comes up with zero results because he's forgiven, he's forgotten, and he's, he's wiped his slate clean in our life. So it's simply by saying, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and be my Savior. If you've got a gift that you buried, it's simply saying, God, forgive me for burying this thing. Forgive me for not using it. I'm going to start using it. Lead me to the people that I can invest in. Lead me to people that will be impacted because of what you've given me for the kingdom of God. God, I thank you for moving in our lives. I thank you that we can take this, we can learn from it, and we can be the, the, the person that was given five bags or five talents. We can be the person that's been given two talents. We can be the person that has been given what we've got, and we can use it for your purpose, and we can multiply it in people's lives. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I encourage you today, impact somebody. Be a blessing to people. Do some, some things that you may not have done before. And just be an encouragement to others. And impact people for Jesus. We have our offering buckets are up here for our tithes and our offerings. And I encourage you today to just be a blessing to someone that you come in contact with.